hurdle of, I know you said take money out of it, mm -hmm. but the reality is we don't get the money here at Kennedy that other schools get because we don't have the percentage of population that's free and reduced. Is that why? Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. and, and their data mm -hmm. looks just like this. And they have the resources. And we don't. So, so I, I guess, uh, I, I, you know, and I'm not saying we don't. I, I just want us to consider for a minute, like, could it be something else? Because those schools get the resources and their data doesn't look any different than this. What home life? Yeah, what about parent involvement? Can we hear the conversation yeah. that's occurring back there? Yeah. You got something to say? Yeah, um, how do we get parent buy in? I mean, we're seeing a lot of attendance issues, and so I guess family buy in is the importance of school and support. So, I'm going to jump to a discussion that this table had in regards to uh, the conversation about where does race show up. They were asking the question, legitimately so, is it race that we should be paying attention to or is it culture? And I think it's a both and. <coughs> Absolutely. Because maybe there's some cultural bridges that need to be built and some gaps that need to be filled between the folks in this room and the parents out there. We all know data say that when parents are more involved with their teachers and the school, the children do better. Hopefully the, the data also say though that you all enjoy your jobs more because you find more success because you have fewer times where you have to deal with issues that take away from this wonderful learning environment, right? So if it is cultural then, well, let me rephrase that. If it's not race, if race doesn't matter, why is there such a significant difference? And again, as Laurie pointed out, this isn't just for here, this is district-wide and other schools with more resources. I'd like to point out, sometimes in Twitter we notice that um, families have a different working, um, they work later for the value of education in addition to um, the cost of daycare. So that kindergarten's all day and free, so if a family were to have the money and resources to keep their child at home another year, almost all of them could. I mean, they always want what's best for their child. But when you add in the money constraints to that, and they say, oh, they can go to school, it's free, it's all day, I'm not paying for daycare, I mean, then that gives a family a head financially, but then in the long run they look at their child, and then they may fall behind because they're not ready. So, like, we see, I think that's a, a fantastic point, and, and, and it's clear that there are certain structural things that would be awesome if, if we were certain that every kid when they came to the public schools was ready for kindergarten, that would be brilliant. If we had preschool that was mandatory, that was working those things through, that would be excellent. The other thing, obviously, that would help would be smaller class sizes. You all know that. Your teachers, smaller class sizes. The connection between that and academic achievement is clear and obvious. But what we're hoping we can think about today is what, was in, what is within your sphere of influence? What is it that you can do? What's within your sphere of influence? Ideally, yeah, it'd be great to have smart classes. That would be cool. Yeah, those, those are clear solutions to the problem. But is there anything that you can do here at Kennedy that will also work towards solving that problem? What's within your sphere of influence? I'd like to see provide more role models or um, So, I'm saying, like, no, 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 this is question. So, what do you think we do for that? Okay. Uh, what I've heard. No. I'm not trying to challenge you. I'm, just, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think with you. And that's, and that's this that um, uh, I heard stories from someone who works here that when Step Africa was here, there was a different response from the kids of color than there was from the white kids. Well, maybe like college students, they are needing like. 
community service or philanthropy or internal or anything like that, whether or not they're being paid, but they can be gaining experience and also giving. Do you know that this is exactly what we're yeah. talking about? See how, like, we can, you, you guys here have a pretty cool resource. You can reach out and you can talk to someone at St. Ben's, perhaps. We know somebody who works there. And you can say, I'm looking for students of color who might be interested in being involved in the community. Can someone come in and just read? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Call Brandon a lot. He's got, he's got nothing to do, especially this week. He's got nothing to do. <laughs> Some folks who may not have had the experiences or the education that I've had, et cetera, et cetera, they may not feel comfortable being in white spaces because they know that they will be scrutinized. For better or for worse, they will get a whole bunch of attention that they really don't want at the end of a long day. An option, I have a better solution for it. How can you all collectively, perhaps in conjunction in collaboration with Eric and me, how can we come up with a solution on how we can actually get these answers from the community? Obviously, it requires trust. I mean, because we're going to ask some families some really personal questions that they may not really feel like answering to you because they don't trust you. <clears throat> so how do we have these conversations? And how do we actually get these, these stories that will help give us some insight, perhaps give us some guidance, give you some guidance on what to do between 1 and 2 o'clock? Or on the bus? Or in the cafeteria? And I think... As awesome as we are, I think your parents are a much better resource. But then the question is, well, why aren't they showing up? Why aren't they coming to parent-teacher meetings? Why are they not calling us? Why are they not having these conversations with us? And I think that gets back to what Eric is asking. What's in this room that we can do, that you can do? And it's not a challenge, it's a problem solving, a brainstorm. But you just summarized things so we did. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> I guess I, mean, I guess we just kind of want to thank you for your time. Uh, it's been really wonderful to see how earnestly you've engaged the conversation. You know, honestly, sometimes when you have talks like this, the folks they get very resistant, you know, very hesitant, and it's difficult to talk about. But I think it's one of the things that's, that's clearly a testimony to just how excellent Kennedy is: is that you are able to have a conversation about this. That you truly do have a trusting and supportive. And I, I hope that you will avail yourselves of our assistance if you'd like it sometime in the future to, to see what else we can do. So thanks again for your time. And so this will be a homework assignment for the next time we see you, whatever the next time is. Um, if equity is a good, and what we do now has an, uh, an ambiguous relationship with it, what do we need to do to pursue it in the classroom, in the curriculum, and in the administration? If there's anything I'd like to have you all lead with is that um, we are not here as outsiders blaming and shaming. We're posing some questions and think about the structural that to some degree we have a little bit of control over, but very much the personal and the interpersonal that you do have control over right now. And, and how you collaborate with each other, how you problem solve, how you actually support each other in trying to make sure that you're doing the right thing, and that perhaps we can take out gender, we can take out culture, we can take out race. And this would be the exact same response that we would have had. Or you could recognize, you know what, I do recognize that maybe because the student looks this way, is this way, etc., I may have treated him or her differently. That's work that you do personally. That's also work that you do professionally. I'd like to think that you're in an environment where you're supported to do that work. 
But I also like to think that you're in an environment that when you try to do it and you make a mistake, there's some leniency, some forgiveness, some professional development, and uh, let's get the second time. I think that's it. Thanks, everybody.